Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so, you know, a lot of people, when they get interested in bees, you know, they're often their first encounter is with um, finding a swarm in their backyard, it accidentally comes into the backyard, something for nothing, they can't give it away. Other people panic and do all sorts of weird things to try and get rid of it. Um, but many people here, you know, catch a swarm. So swarming is the natural means of increase of honeybee colonies. So what happens is half the colony leaves with the old queen, normally, and she clusters on a bush. And it's not that far from the parent colony. Bees work for the need of the whole family or the whole swarm or hive. So when that happens, what do they got to do? When they hang on a bush, what do they got to do? Tell me. Find a home. I can't hear real well, so I won't ask questions. I usually ask questions to get people involved. So they got to find a home because honeybees live in cavities. So bees from here go out and look in all the hollow cavities around the place. They're not supposed to do that. Um, and when they find somewhere, they then all take off to that cavity. They gorge themselves on nectar before they leave because they don't know if they're going to stop there for a week, a month or whatever. And occasionally they'll build in the open and build came in the open. That's rare. So when you get a phone call and the ABA's got a swarm catchers list, yeah, it's probably wise to go and put them in a box. I'll do that in a minute. So they might be there for a few hours. They might be there for a longer time. Once they decide to go, the whole lot take off in the middle of the day and go into a new cavity and that becomes their new home. Any that are out looking for a home or go back to where they come from because the colony's not that far away you know, where they go back to. Bees that swarm can sometimes carry diseases, particularly brood diseases, because the bacteria get on the body of the bees. And Miskell talked about that this morning. So swarms can carry disease, so therefore it's important if you put bees in a box you know, to monitor it you know, for about a month or more to make sure they didn't bring any diseases back because you can't see the serious diseases of adult bees on their body. You can only see it in the brood that they feed when it develops. So always keep them isolated and check that they're healthy after a month or six weeks, um, that there's no symptoms of any of the diseases that Miskell talked about this morning. That's really important. You should put them onto comb foundation, not drawn combs. Okay, so that's comb foundation. So the bees will use any nectar in their honey stomach, and that sometimes can rid them of the serious bacterial brood disease of bees. Only bill work a comb there, so it's important to do all that sort of stuff. Because they're full of nectar, you don't want to put them on drawn frames, or frames with particularly nectar in them because they gorge themselves on nectar and they can take off and, and, and leave if that's the case. So dry combs are the best thing. You put them into some sort of container, you know, it's important they can hang on to something. You don't put them in a cardboard box with nothing in it because the first bump you hear, hit, they'll all fall to the ground. And Michael um, Symes this morning told us how hot a swarm gets. So how hot does a swarm get? 40 degrees Celsius, right. So 40 degrees Celsius. So you don't want them to overheat. If you put them in too small a box, they'll overheat because they're full of nectar. It's important to you know, use a screen. So that's a screen over the top of a box or a cardboard box. Yeah, you need to put some ventilation in it so the bees can't get out. You need a large amount of ventilation because if you don't have a large amount of ventilation, they'll still smother. So where do bees breathe? What part of the body they breathe through? It's the abdomen anyway. Right, so they breathe through their abdomen. So they'll go to light if you've only got a small amount of ventilation and they'll block it off because they don't breathe through their head. By having a big area like that, they move around and the air will go through and they won't smother. When you get them home, you, know, you can let them out straight away or maybe better to let them out at night if they've still got plenty of air so they don't abscond. Sometimes swarms will abscond because they get overheated 
they're shaken up, taken to where you want to go to them. But usually if you let them out at night, you know, they won't abscond. Why abscond we mean they just all leave. The next day you come out and you've got no buoys. So to catch a swarm, I'll put that screen on. And the frames in there, you know, you need to be tight. If I've got a cardboard box, I'd get some branches and stick in the cardboard box and let the buoys go into the cardboard box. So I've got something to cluster on. That's really important. So to catch a swarm, you can go to it and just shake it off the branch. That's a vacuum system that's got a filter on it. It hooks into there, so the bees get sucked into the bucket. So if they're in a hedge or a trellis or something, you can safely suck them out of there. That's got a variable speed suction on it, so it'll suck really slow, and you can slowly draw them out of there. You can't put it in a wall and suck them all out because you won't get them all out. So you can catch a swarm you know, with that. They go into the bucket and then you shake the bucket in front of the hive. If I've got bees that are in a difficult spot, up a tree or something, you know, I take a bucket with me, one of those honey buckets that's plastic and slippery, shake the bees into that. As I come down the ladder, just keep shaking it a bit so they can't fly out. They'll just stop there and then put them in front of the hive. So buckets are handy because they're light to catch swarms that are difficult. Old swarms usually swarm low down on the ground. Sometimes a hive will swarm twice if it's super strong. And the second one goes with a virgin queen. That usually goes fairly high in a tree. So old swarms down low, virgin queens up high. You get a swarm that's got the old queen in it, put that in a box, that queen is mated and will lay straight away. She stopped laying to fly. She usually goes two days before the swarm cells hatch to indicate she's going to swarm. In the case of a virgin, it's going to take her another 10 days before she'll lay because she mates on the 5th and 7th day after she emerges from the cell. So she emerges from the cell, swarms that day, you're waiting 10 days to see brood in the hive. So to catch a swarm, it's just simply a matter of shaking them in the front of the box. You know, some people put them into the box, but you can shake them in the front of the box. I don't know what this attraction is, but anyway... Because it's quite hot in here, and I think that's probably they're spreading out to keep it cool. I suspect it's quite, it's quite warm in here. And when they were clustered, they were a lot hotter. So now by spreading out, they've kept themselves cooler. So it's an artificial situation. I've never had them ever do that ever before. You learn something every day with bees. Right, so I'll shake it in the front of the box. And if you want to, you can come up and watch. So all the bees now will run into that box. So that could be any box. It doesn't have to be a bee box. And they all race in. So, are there any questions or... Like, where's the coin? Oh, the coin's right here. So, okay, so how did I do this? No, oh, they're going to the other hive. Some of them. That's put a roadblock up. So you can see they're terrific communicators and they're all, you know, running into the hive. Um, so how do I do this? I had a hive. I found the queen and put her in a cage. I tied her onto the branch. I took the hive away and left some bees in it because there's still some brood in it and put the branch where the hive was with the queen tied on the branch. The bees come back from the field, the bees that were nurse bees, yeah, went to the queen. But you can see that they're running into the hive, and I've got the queen in my hand, there's not a bee coming near it. So, yeah, the queen is not relevant to them running into the box. But we usually don't have two hives in the one cage, and they're getting lost a bit. I have to brush them back. So a beehive is made up of many, many families and that's important that she gets multiple mating. Drones meet in a certain area and it's the same every year and we put helium balloons up here to find drones with queen pheromone on them to identify drone congregation areas. The virgins know that, they, the odour, they sense that and they mate there. Then 10 days later she'll mate and then she releases those sperm over four years. So the queen will live four years but they replace, I'm talking about coins later, so 
The coin will be replaced quicker than that. So that's how the system works. I noticed that you didn't get stung by any. How come that works? <laughs> well, if you know, if you handle bees and don't show fear, they're less likely to sting you. So you, and I do this just to give people confidence. I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but don't do what I've done. I mean, put bee veils and stuff on, right? Because you don't know when you're going to have an allergic reaction. But if you handle bees deliberately, yeah, they're less likely to be aggressive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's a colony in a tree, right? So you've got to get a chainsaw, cut it open, expose it, cut out the straighter sections of worker brood, have frames without any wire in them, put rubber bands around the straighter sections of brood and put it in a box, leave it where it fell down overnight and all the bees will go in, hopefully. If you don't get the queen, because there's young brood in the cut out bit, they'll make their own queen. I was real particular this morning, we kept on time. I better do the same. Go on. Oh, you threw it. It was going to be a surprise. Oh, right, eh?